War games can end up enormous, huge sprawling affairs, a magnificent spectacle with hundreds of infantry, massive war machines, and an epic story to follow. But there is an awful lot that goes into that, and there's an awful lot that gets lost along the way. And so hi, I'm Edgar, and I want to point towards and extol the virtues of the smaller games, which can, many times, be a lot more fun. Now I'm not specifically talking about skirmish games or RPGs, although some of the points that I'll discuss do apply to those as well. I am mainly talking about playing a war game with units moved around in squads, but with a lower points cost than would usually be used. By way of some examples, bolt action is usually played at 800 to 1000 points, and a small game would be 5 to 600 points. Warhammer 40k is often played at 2,000 points, but a small game would be 1,000 points. Some games can somewhat fall apart at smaller sizes, and so the exact ratio of size as to what makes a small game does depend on the game system. And some game systems just kind of fall apart and are just are impossible to balance at small sizes. Well, 40k isn't balanced at any size, and so we can sort of ignore that. But what are the advantages of the smaller games, I hear you ask? What is all of this fun that you keep talking about? Why play some little games when we can play an epic massive game over a weekend? Which would be awesome. And yes, it would be awesome, but that time scale is my first point. If you only have an hour or two to play, then you probably can't set up and play and pack away in that limited kind of time frame. I guess you could if you were a kind of speed player, which is valid, but not for everyone. But rather by playing a smaller game, you can easily fit that in without stressing about time. You could set up, play the game, pack away, all in a reasonable time span. But on the occasions where you do have a whole weekend or a full afternoon of several hours, you might try going for a whole campaign to play three or four or five or maybe even more individual small games that you can weave together into a narrative and rather than just telling a single big battle, you can tell the whole war. And there have been times when I've played four games in four hours, and that's including taking a break for pizza. And somewhat related to the time it takes to actually play these games is the time it takes to actually like prepare for the games. Making the models and painting the models and making the terrain and painting the terrain and all of that. That's an awful lot of time and recently I've changed my occupation and I have a lot less time for the hobby side of things. So when it comes to building models and painting models and making videos about the process because I can't help but do multiple hobbies at the same time, well I don't have the time to make another 200 models for yet another game. But what I can do is pick up a couple of sprues, print off some extra bodies, and make 30-ish desert rats for bolt action, which I'm currently painting through. And as it would be fairly obvious, 30 models and 2 or 3 buildings is going to take a lot less time than, say, 150 or 200 models and maybe 10 buildings. Or trees or hills or the other kind of pieces of terrain that you wanted to make. So hopefully I'll be able to finish off a few more of these by the end of this video and maybe I'll have that platoon ready for a game at some time before the next century. And that sort of leads into another one of my points that I want to mention today. With a smaller points limit and a smaller number of models, you kind of have to be a bit more sensible at what units you actually want to take. For big games, you can take everything, a perishable buffet of all of the infantry choices, all of the tanks, all of the other vehicles, all of the fancy specialist units, and mix them into your army, and you have everything to be able to put on the table at the same time and deal with anything. But when you've got, say, 30 models or so to put on the table, you can't necessarily do everything. You can bring a tank, but those points are going to reduce the other options. You might take a veteran infantry squad, which is going to be quite capable, but that's going to exclude you from having that tank. Maybe you want to have some weapon teams, machine guns and mortars and that sort of things. Well, maybe those veterans cost too many points to be able to put in the same time. And that means that you have to think about making your army list. And when you're thinking, you become more invested in the game, and that can make it a lot more fun. 
my Tanith first and only up on the shelf. There are all light infantry, a couple of heavy weapons scattered around, but they're for pushing forward and taking ground. My bolt-action Soviet army has bloated out into a veritable horde with almost all of the options that are available to them in the bolt-action game. And so when I play the smaller games, as I prefer to do, do I try and squeeze in the T-34? Do I take some artillery units? Big infantry squads or maybe a couple of those small teams? And that directly follows into then pretty much the same point almost, but from the tabletop side of things, is when you've made that choice, that limited selection that you're going to bring to the game, when you're on the tabletop, you have to make that work. And so when it comes to tactical thinking, again, you're thinking, you're invested, and that can make it more enjoyable. You have no reserves, you have no second option if your first option fails. And so you have to be a lot more sure of your decisions. Which I admit can seem a little stressful at first, but when you manage to pull something off, it can make it all the more enjoyable. Or even when you don't manage to pull something off. For example, a small game that I played, I did not bring a tank, my opponent did, and that took out my only anti-tank gun. And so I took the decision at the end of turn one to just mob up, charge forwards, ignore their tank and just kind of roll with the punches and see what I can do about taking out the enemy infantry. By the end of the game, we'd rolled up as a draw and we were both laughing at how hysterical things had gone. And that's sort of my point, is that small games are kind of more fun all around. Much less effort to get started, you can play more of them more often, and because you're thinking about the choices you take and the moves you're making on the battlefield, you can get more invested and really have a good time. Now there are a few pitfalls, I will admit, I did mention earlier. Some games don't balance very well at small kind of points costs and they can fall apart. And certain kind of army lists that you might take, even if the game generally is well balanced, the armies that you take might not be balanced. So maybe this is one of those times where talking to your opponent in advance is a good idea. Maybe share a limit between you and your opponent so your armies hopefully aren't completely imbalanced. But those are my thoughts, what are yours? Post in the comments below if you have played small games like what I'm talking about here, or if you're considering them now, maybe you've only played the big extravagant games before. I do really want to start this as a discussion rather than just me spouting out my opinion and that's the end of that. So do feel free to disagree as well. If you do like the big games, that's completely valid and I don't want to say that they're bad. I just want to say that they shouldn't be the only thing that people ever play. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching. Now I'm going to get back to painting this guy.